everyone, welcome back to my channel, Lorene HD, and a very happy new year to you. Today we're going to discuss um, consent and we're going to talk about Bridgeton, a very popular Netflix show. So if you haven't watched Bridgeton yet, I suggest you pause this video, go binge Bridgeton on Netflix, and then come back because we're going to discuss some very specific scenes. And I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, but for the rest of us... So the topic of consent has gotten quite a lot of attention, uh, especially after the Me Too movement, which was started by Tarana Burke, a civil rights activist in 2007, and kind of blew up in 2017 after sexual abuse allegations against Harvey Weinstein. Now, it gets hairy because if the general idea of consent is clear to most people, meaning that consensual sex happens when two people are willingly engaging in sexual activities, the nitty-gritty of how to give and get consent and when and what to give or get it on becomes very debated. So I want to start by acknowledging that I really enjoyed some of the um, sexual intimacy and chemistry that was portrayed on screen by the two main characters, Simon and Daphne. And specifically, I'm thinking about an episode called The Duke and I, um, I wonder if I can show you some videos or if it's gonna be taken down. Well, just to be safe, I'm gonna talk it out and I'm not gonna show you, but the episode is The Duke and I, where they are spending their first honeymoon um, night and essentially Simon picks up on Daphne's hesitation and so he pauses and says, do you want me to stop? And then he reiterates his question by even pulling away, like further away from her and look into her eyes and really give her that moment and that space of answering truthfully if she wanted him to hold off or not. So for that, my thumbs went right up. But then in the following episode, my thumbs went right down. Why? So the scene that I'm specifically referring to is the one where Daphne gets on top of her husband for the first time. Um, and basically doesn't let him pull out the way that he had been doing since they started having um, sex. The first um, interesting thing is that not everybody acknowledged that scene as rape. So did Daphne rape Simon? And the answer is yes, 100%. Just because they are married, just because people are in a relationship, just because they have had sex before, it doesn't mean that rape cannot occur. So now why is it rape? First of all, if you rewatch the scene, you'll see that Simon asks her to wait. And then he says again, wait. And she can tell that he is in distress, but she willingly chooses to keep going and to not acknowledge his request to take a moment and stop. So whether you agree with her concern or not, instead of simply having a conversation about this, being like, hey, this child thing, is it that you don't want to or is it that you can't? And just kind of talk it out. She willingly decides to ignore his request, disregard his distress. Clearly his body language was expressing distress. And she decides to go the my way or no way route and essentially decides to just assault him um, as a way to kind of find out if her suspicions are Right. Next, the second question, does the desire for a child within a marriage justify non-consensual behavior? So essentially, does the end justify the means in this case? And my answer for this is no. And this is a very important topic because it actually happens um, a bit differently in modern times. But before I get into it, I just want to disclaim that I do not have a child and I do not know if I'll ever have a child, but one thing I know is that every person should have the right to decide when they want to become parents. And today this uh, means every person should have access to education, sexual education, every person should have access to um, birth control and to barrier methods um, such as internal or external condoms when, you know, pregnancy is not wanted by either one or both parties. But I'll also make a parenthesis that accidents happen and in that case it's super important that uterus owners have the right and agency to decide what to do with their body. But since that topic kind of leads us down a different road, 
away from the topic of this video, consent and Bridgeton, I'm just gonna close the parenthesis here. Back to Bridgeton. If Simon doesn't want to become a parent, that's his right. Being married to Daphne doesn't mean he owes her a child, especially because he made it super clear since the beginning that their union would not result in a family. So if that was a deal breaker for her, she should have gone like right there, right then. Whether he could have but didn't want children, whether he wanted but couldn't have had children, or whatever the backstory behind that outcome was. In my opinion, forced fatherhood, which is when uterus owners decide to stop being on birth control um, without letting their partners know of that decision and therefore the partner doesn't know of the pregnancy risk behind their sexual activity, um, is not talked about enough in culture. And whenever I do hear it being talked about in like personal private conversations, um, there's often weird justifications like, oh, but the clock was ticking for uterus owners and so they couldn't afford to wait any longer or oh, it was the call of the womb that justified their action and like all of these reasons for me are just first and foremost very selfish. All right, moving on to our third question. Is Simon's disclosure to Daphne that their marriage would remain a child-free one enough to consider that Daphne made an informed decision about her future. And this is where things are going to become subjective. So I'm gonna give you mine and then you can do whatever you want with that information, but also please let me know yours. But to me, yes. Sure, let's remember that had she not decided to marry the Duke, um, either him or her brother would have died on this duel thing. Um, so it's not like she had days or weeks to think about it and she had to be quick on her feet and she had to make a decision kind of um, on the spur of the moment. So usually these scenarios don't lead to the best decisions. So yes, Daphne, I hear you. This was not the most peaceful situation to make a decision. Point taken. Still, still, I feel that he gave her the most important piece of information, which is that, you know, if you marry me, you will never become a mother. And he knew that that was a deal breaker for her, and so he gave her the opportunity to break that deal. And she didn't. So it's as if he gave her the finale. He gave her, like, this is, is, is this where you want to end up? Okay, I need to, my hair is doing weird things. Quick pause, there's also something in the plot that doesn't really make sense to me. Like, I, okay, now I'm gonna start projecting myself. With Simon, had I been in the situation, and I thought I can never have kids with my husband because he cannot. And then I discovered, oh, it's a decision rather than a matter of biology. I would have been happy because it would have meant, oh, shit. I thought of the worst case scenario, but actually we could talk about it. Mind you that, you know, if someone doesn't want to have children, it's their decision. But at least there could have been an exchange about it. Like it was not this fatal, irreversible decision but instead she learns that it is something that they could potentially do something about should he want to and she becomes more upset by knowing that potentially it is reversible than what she initially thought of it being irreversible so i'm like shouldn't she be happy all right moving on to our fourth question can the responsibility of rape ever shift from rapist to victim and the answer is a very straightforward no even if you disagree with me that he gave her enough information for her to make an informed decision about her future that can never justify rape so if you are put in a position of feeling like you were not you know, given inf enough information to make an informed decision, that can never justify non-consensual behavior. And the way the show is making the viewers side with Daphne, for me, is super unethical. After the rape scene, you can see he asks her, what did you do? And then he says, how could you? So you clearly see and feel that his trust is broken, but Nowhere at any point does the show, first of all, make Daphne acknowledge that what she did was rape and never do they go back and give Daphne and the viewer a chance to acknowledge 
the impact of her actions and the fact that you know she her her behavior led to one potentially traumatizing her partner and two the trust within the couple is now broken all of that is just brushed over as if that white lie justified her action so if she felt that her consent had been violated because she wasn't given the full you know download of why she wouldn't be a mother if she married him she kind of fought fire with fire and then violated his consent of not wanting to be a father so if the show is going to make Simon sort of pay for his white lie, it should also make her pay for her decision of raping him as a way to kind of right his wrong. All right, and lastly, this is not a question because I feel like it's not a question, but shaming someone for not wanting kids is just wrong. Whether you are a uterus owner who has, you know, been feeling the societal pressure to become a mother as a sign of success or because, I don't know, it's been a dream of yours since you are a child, whatever the reason, or penis owners who are kind of decide, not, not deciding, but pressuring uterus owners um, to have children and how to have children and penis owners are not the ones who will bear the child and who will have to, for lack of a better word, suffer the pregnancy on their own body. That does not give you permission to shame your partner um, for not wanting kid or to pressuring or even more forcing your partner to become a parent. So shaming a partner for not wanting kid, mm. nah. Ooh, that was a lot. If you want to be notified of my future videos, make sure that you hit subscribe. And if you found this video valuable, make sure you leave a thumbs up. That's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Ciao.